Aloha y bienvenidos to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion, your host. Today's program is about the country of Venezuela. Venezuela is located in South America and used to be the richest country in Latin America. But today, Venezuela is falling apart. Due to the political, social, and economic crisis that is affecting the government and the people in Venezuela, the regions within the area of Venezuela, the United States, and the Venezuela residents here in Hawaii. To help us to understand what is happening in Venezuela, we have for our guest, Tania Molina. Bienvenidos and welcome to Hispanic Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, Richard. I appreciate this opportunity to express what is happening in Venezuela, at least for a few times. Well, let's start by telling me a little bit about yourself, how long you've been a resident here in Venezuela, and how the situation in Venezuela is affecting you and your family. Well, I have been here in uh, Hawaii, in the island, since December last year, so I have around seven months already, and uh, the situation is uh, so terrible and, uh, in Venezuela, and of course, my life is not normal anymore since uh, the situation is starting in April. And, uh, so my family is uh, in protest every day, and uh, I have been trying to support them from here, and I'm worried all the time about what is happening there. I keep 24 hours just looking in the media, in the social media, and in Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, trying to find information, because sometimes I, um, I know first what is happening in Venezuela here than my family. So I try to keep them informed and uh, warning them what is happening there because the censorship of the media in Venezuela, the TV stations and the radio stations, they cannot tell what is happening in Venezuela. So I try my best for keeping informed and, and have or handle it, the major information that I can so I can keep warning them and my friends and family. So here in Hawaii, it's roughly about 122,000 Latinos. I know you have a, a Facebook page for Venezuela in Hawaii. Do you know roughly how many Venezuelans are part of the website, or how many of those living in Hawaii? Well, in the website, there are around 57 people. But um, uh, for the next um, Ele not elections, the consultant that we are going to do next 16 of July. Um, I am made in now like a census of the people that is living right now in Venezuela, in Hawaii from Venezuela, and there are around 28, 30 people that they are going to express on the next uh, uh, Sunday, and they are living right now here in Venezuela. It's around 30, so maybe there are more, but on uh, so far, the information that I have is just 30, but must be more. Okay, it's a small group. Uh, so how did Venezuela get to this point? They are the richest country in Latin America. Uh, they have the most oil reserve in the world. Mm -hmm. But they had the worst crisis, not only political, social, and economic. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to understand what's really happening in Venezuela, uh, we're going to show you a video so people get an understanding what is happening in Venezuela. Venezuela used to be the richest country in Latin America, but now it's falling apart. If you've turned on the news lately, you've probably seen stories about protests, food shortages, and massive inflation. So how did Venezuela go from this to this? Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves, and oil exports make up over 95% of the country's income. Meaning, if it doesn't sell oil, there's no money to spend. On top of that, Venezuela hasn't been taking good care of its oil facilities, and the state-run oil company hasn't paid its subsidiaries. So these companies started producing less oil, a lot less. The oil price has also plummeted, which leads us to the next problem, how Venezuela uses its money. Protesters claim Nicolas Maduro and his predecessor Hugo Chavez ran the country to the ground. In 1998, Chavez launched a political revolution with a new constitution and socialist economic and social policies, all boosted by high oil prices. He started redistributing land and wealth. He nationalized oil, finance, agricultural and industrial companies. He fixed prices and devalued the exchange rate with the US dollar. 
These policies helped a lot of people, but with less money coming in, the system collapsed by the time Maduro took over. Now the country's down to its last $10 billion, of which $7.7 billion are in gold and can't be spent in a hurry. And it owes roughly $7.2 billion in outstanding debt this year. Because of all this, the country's currency, the Bolivar, has lost 99% of its value in the past five years. So for example, $100 of currency in 2012 would be worth just 20 cents in 2017. Inflation reached an all-time high with 800% in December 2016, and the IMF estimates it will go up all the way to 1,134%. Let me visualize that. That means that liter of milk that may have cost $1 before could end up costing roughly $11 by the end of this year. In a country where 80% of people live in poverty, that's just not affordable. And it makes things especially hard if you're a country that gets most of its food from abroad. Food and supplies have become so scarce as a result of inflation and price controls, they're being sold on the black market instead of in stores. With a large part of the country on the brink of starvation, food trafficking has become the biggest business in Venezuela. So Maduro put the military in charge of managing the country's food supply. But an AP investigation found that the military runs its own black markets and takes bribes from food importers. To be fair, there were shortages under Chavez too, but under Maduro, they became even greater. So great, in fact, that three quarters of Venezuela's adult population lost an average of 8.7 kilos in the past year. People also have trouble getting their hands on life-saving medical supplies. The country is lacking roughly 80% of basic medical supplies, leading to drastic consequences. Venezuela is in the middle of a vicious cycle of bad policies and worse luck. It's been at the top of the World Misery Index for three consecutive years. So then, why is Maduro still in power? Venezuela's poorest haven't taken to the streets so far. They're afraid to lose some of the benefits they gained under Chavez. And Maduro's support base goes beyond just the poor. He has the military on his side because he's been keeping them happy by providing jobs, food, and basic supplies. Empowered by the support, he's been accusing the opposition of encouraging violence and training children for terrorist groups, which is what he likes to call the protesters. Now, he wants to create a popular assembly that can rewrite the constitution, and he declared a state of emergency. The opposition is afraid the assembly will be entirely made up of pro-Maduro parties, so they're calling for new elections and Maduro's resignation. Since April 1st, 2017, 67 people have died in the protests, hundreds have been injured and thousands arrested. Mediating the standoff will be a tough mission, even for the Pope. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got a better understanding of what went wrong in Venezuela. So, Tanya, let me ask you, uh, what was the main reason, in your opinion, the opposition started doing the protests in Venezuela? Well, I think uh, what causes really the, the protesters just uh, in the beginning of April, it was uh, the first of all, the government, uh, they make a strike to the constitutions and to the uh, all the laws because they just say to the justice justice uh, department the justice people that uh, take the control of the national assembly so that causes the anger of the venezuelans and of course venezuelans are so tired already about all the misery they are living right now they they, ha they don't have food, they don't have medicines, and uh, it's so desperate for them. So the people that is going out on the streets, they just are trying to uh, don't lose the country, and they want a better country. They are fighting for the dreams to have a better country. So I think uh, the situation started for that, for the uh, strike from the government that they did just violating all the laws. and. Uh, uh, the Venezuelans, that they are just tired about the situation, the general situation about the lack of everything. All the, the and also the crime, the crime in Venezuela is so high. We have a, uh, the statistics say that we have like around 20,000 dead people, murdered people per year. Wow. In a country that only have 30 millions of people living there, it's, it's amazing, the crime there. So people is tired of the crime and uh, tired of the lack of food and medicines. 
So people is just want to have a normal life and and the human and the human rights uh, uh, provided from the government that is food, medicines, and and security. So what do you think, Maduro? We accomplish by trying to change the constitution in Venezuela. Well, I think he wants to establish the the dictator, the dictatorships, and make it legal. That is all that I think. Since he is going or proposing uh, eliminate the universal elections, that means that we cannot vote anymore. So we are fighting also for that. We cannot lose our freedom. We cannot lose the few democracy that we have right now. So Maduro keeps saying that the protesters, the opposition against his government, they are terrorists. Uh, what is your opinion about that? Well, uh, my opinion is that, like I say, the Venezuelans that are right now on the street, uh, they are just fighting for the, for having the things that they are they they lose since years ago because this is the situation in Venezuela is is getting worse all the time and the government is not doing anything the government is just getting weapons and uh, buying and getting weapons and bullets tanks for fighting the Venezuelans that are protesters on the street and uh, they are not getting food or buying food because. The government, like you, you said in the in the video, you show in the video, uh, the government just killed all the internal production inside Venezuela. So we were a rich country that we were producing almost everything inside the country, and now Venezuelans depend of the few amounts of food they are bringing from uh, foreign countries. So it's a it's a hard situation that the Venezuelans are just living right now. It's a nightmare. So by looking at the picture that we just show, uh, we see like it's just the regular people from kids all the way to grandpa, grandma in the street that disagree how the uh, government is running thing. I don't see any terrorists. But it seems that it's getting to a point of escalation between riots and between uh, students uh, fighting back and forth with the government because they are tired of all the situations. Yes, but uh, they, they are not terrorists at all. I think the only terrorist is the state. We have a, a, a terrorist state that they are just trying to scare people using the weapons, using the military forces, just for keep the protesting people out of the street and, and show them or, or keep them afraid. But Venezuelans, they, they lost the, the afraid. And, and there are many Venezuelans that they prefer to die instead of still living in that way, in the miserable way that they are living right now. Well, uh, we can see with the species they're not terrorists, it's just people like you and me. But we're about to take a, a quick break and we'll be returned yeah. after this commercial. Thank you. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We're here with Tania Molina talking about the situation that is happening in Venezuela. So talk to me about the food crisis and, and the lack of supply for medication. And I heard that Venezuela uh, food trafficking is the biggest business in Venezuela. Tell me about that. Well, uh, yes, right now the few uh, uh, food that the people can find uh, is coming from the black market. So the prices are just so impossible to get. So that is why there are more than three millions of Venezuelans eating from the garbage because they they just don't have enough money to handle that. 
And uh, the situation in Venezuela with the, the lack of food uh, is so bad right now. The country, the government is trying to control everything and they are trying to import some type of food that is called clap so time of food and they put it in a box and they are giving that those those food or selling that food to the people but those is not enough for the the quantity of people so they make you buy what they want to to that you eat so you cannot buy or you cannot get food in the time that you want to that if you want to go right now to get rice you cannot get it so it's impossible to live like that just uh, living from the misery that the government wants to give you that is unacceptable so what is the opposition fighting against the government and who else because looking it through the research i seen that is all the people supporting maduro government do you know anything about that well uh, i think uh, uh the government of uh, venezuela is supporting from from cuba of course is the first supporter of the government, the Cuban people, and uh, it looks like, uh, according with some witnesses that they have been going to the protests, uh, they say that they, they listen how they speak and the language, they, they sounds like Cuban. And uh, it looks like uh, people from Bolivia to some people that the president of Bolivia is sending to Venezuela. And uh, it, there are people that say also that they have been listen like kind of another language that is like so everybody supposed that is like people from Iran that is uh, forces from Iran that are just fighting inside Venezuela trying to to stop the protestants and trying to keep the people afraid for don't go out and express so who is the collective uh, the support Maduro that he paid in to be part of the government and create confusion within the protest? Well, uh, the, those people is like a kind of guerrilla that the government is supporting. Uh, they pay civilians and they army them. They, they gave, uh, the government gave them weapons and they supply them with bullets. So these people just create terrorists, terrorists inside the, the protesters and in some areas of some cities just to create like panic that people fell in panic and they don't go out and they cannot express something that is in the constitution that when you 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 are free for protest so but these people is like uh it's a guerrilla that the government just uh, uh is supporting economically for uh, for sure and uh there are people it it say there are says that say that also that these people is also criminals that they are in jails so say they sometimes put them out and give the weapons to just try to scare people and kill people there are so many students and people protesting that they have been killing for this guerrilla that so, is army from the government so that's the reality is the government the collecting and all the civilians supporting uh, the government so i want to show a video uh, real quick and this video is going to show the reality that the people is facing in venezuela fighting against the government
this video show you the reality that is happening in Venezuela every day and fight is not going to stop and we are afraid that might be coming into a civil war. So what are we doing in July 16 that is so important to the Venezuela people in Venezuela and around the world? Well, uh, Richard, um, the democratic uh, people inside Venezuela, the National Assembly and all the the people that is working for for save the democracy uh, we are calling to the a consultant it's like a press beside but it's a consultant to all venezuelans inside and outside the country um, there is just three questions about uh, if we want the new constitution that is proposal for maduro and the other question is about if we um, are agreed that the uh, military forces support the constitution that is actually right now because they are out of the constitution they are supporting and and they are just uh taking care about the government and and just fighting for the government not not for the people for the venezuelans and the third question is uh, uh related about if we venezuelans if we want a uh, um, transitions government and if we want uh, uh, a new justice uh, department and if we want a new electoral department too because these people they 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 were named in a very suspicious way and they are not uh, legal right now so those are the three questions and it's very important because we want to show uh, Venezuela and we want to show the world that we are majority, that the Venezuelans, we want peace, we want a change. We need a change in the government to, to become a better country, to become a, the, the richest country that we are. So the call is for all the Venezuelans that are inside and outside just to, to go and, and, and just uh, uh, be part of this this uh, this uh, act that we are going to to make next Sunday. Are you afraid that uh, Maduro might stay in power and win this election and allow to change the constitution? I'm not afraid because um, I am sure that all country is uh, is uh, democratic. Uh, in the majority of people is we are democrats and we want to keep the democracy. And there are so many surveys that say that there are more than uh, 85, 90 percentage of the people, Venezuelans, that we don't want the change in the Constitution. So they don't want so, to change the Constitution? Yes, yes. so this, these are surveys that they have been uh, handling inside the country, but we want to show the world and, and the country and these people that is handling the government that it's not only a survey. That is great. So what's the Venezuela's resident in Hawaii are doing here in Hawaii to help with the situation? Well, here in Hawaii, the best uh, way that we have been going to some area located in Waikiki Beach and, and we go just to show, it's kind of a protest, but it's more like a, in, give information to people. And there are so many receptive from from foreign people and from local people that they are interested to know what is happening in Venezuela. Like, we want to know what is happening and how we can help. And, and that gives us a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of faith and a lot of uh, uh, happiness to yeah, know that, that there are people that is interesting to know what is happening and, and trying to know how to help. That is great. So that gives us a lot of uh, power and uh, Believe me, every time that it happens, some murder in Venezuela, some kill, or th these students, they are just dreamers. They are people that they just want a Dreaming like, future. like you and me, want a better future. They want a better future. So every time that I feel like, oh my God, I need to do something. So that is my way for release. So what is your final message to well, Venezuela people? My final message to my country is like, uh, don't give up. Don't give up. The freedom is closer. The freedom is closer than ever. And uh, we are a great country. And we are a great people. <laughs> we, we deserve better. And we will have the better. Well, I want to say thank you for coming.
to Hispanic thank Hawaii you. No, and thank you for the help invitation. us to understand what is happening in thank Venezuela. You. And the best thing that we can do is keep ourselves informed and inform others. So it's if you miss the show, you can watch the show at Teen Tech Hawaii. Or you can send me an email at richconception at gmail.com. Thank you. Gracias. Santo nombre tembló de pavor, el vil egoísmo que otra vez triunfó. Y a este santo nombre, y a este santo nombre tembló de pavor, el vil egoísmo que otra vez triunfó. Otra vez triunfó, gloria al bravo pueblo que el yugo lanzó, la ley respetando la virtud de honor. Aloha, I'm feeling extra, tell me this love that I'm feeling, feeling.